I am super excited. For so long, I was scared to do any ID lathe work, like boring. I just was scared. We had a job come in, it was time to punch my man card, and we figured it out. So let's walk through SolidWorks. We're also gonna talk about Fusion 360 on some really awesome lathe, CNC, OD, and ID work, CAD cam, and then let's go make some chips, folks. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Uh, so here's the part we want to end up with. What I also want to show is it's so freaking easy to make lathe parts from a CAD and CAM standpoint. We talked about this in our video on the night vision ring adapter. Let's walk through it. So new part. Let's create a sketch on the front plane. And what we're going to do is create this extruded revolve shape. So watch, follow along here. Line. We're going to just do it like this along here. I don't even want to go down there because I'll show you in a second and snap it back. Now let's start. I like doing it this way because it makes gives you the rough shape. Sometimes it's a little bit odd because now we're going to start dimensioning stuff. We want there to be a 0.2 inch through hole. So everything here is on the radius. So 0.2 divided by 2 is 0.1. We're going to make the overall length one inch. We're going to make this part. Uh, we're starting with one inch round bar. We want to trim that off just a hair. So we'll do 0.99 divided by two. We are going to drill with a 13 16 So that would be uh, 0.825, oh, sorry, divided by two. And we want to go a little bit more than that, so we'll say 0 0.825 divided by 2. Now we need to invert this thing, so let's do, if we move, hit S and go back to select, we should be able to just drag this up. Yeah, perfect. Go back, S, key, dimension, and now we can say, let's make that 0.375 long. That gives us, uh, let's see here. So the blue lines are things that we need to define more for SOLIDWORKS to not be mad at us. So if we click that, we'll say 0.05, that's fine. We, that length is fine, and it just needs to know this length, that's fine. Oops, it's here, it's this, it's this one. Here to here, 0.2. Now you can see in the bottom we're fully defined, everything's black. You notice we didn't come down here, again that's, so we have a through hole, I am going to go ahead and create a line. Oops. A line right here. Hit S. Click that line and hit for construction. Now SolidWorks is really good. When you hit, I went to features here and I hit revolve boss base, it just figures it out for us. Click OK. It knew to revolve that pattern we made around that axle we drew. Awesome. That look great. Right? 0.2 and oops, no, I screwed up. Ah, I screwed up because this, that's why. Sorry. This to here is 0.825 divided by 2, and this to here, 0.495. Boom. I say I didn't think that looked right much better. While we're at it, we're going to sketch a few uh, reference things. Right here on this plane, we're going to sketch a one inch circle. We're going to use that for our stock. So we can click that and say construction. And then I struggle to put in coordinate systems. So we're going to insert reference geometry. Oops. Eggs our sketch. Insert reference geometry point. Click here and that puts a point right there where we want it. Now we need to put in a coordinate system. Watch me screw this up. I wish I could figure this out. 
In fact, actually, I know we need a couple of axes that help. So put in an axis. We'll put in one. If we just click this, you'll get one through the part. It's great. If you do that again, let's do it. I need an x-axis, which along the slant bed lay, that's how it moves back and forth, sort of away from the operator. And that we can do with, uh, let's see here, what is that going to be? Front plane and right plane. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, now watch me screw this up. Coordinate system. We know our, our point is point one. Sweet. We know the z-axis is here. Did it just work? No. So the red, yeah, you can barely see this. The red is the x. I want the x where the green is right now. So x-axis, we're in that correct field. First of all, why did it even just move on me right there? That's ridiculous. OK. Let's keep, keep it there. x-axis, reverse. Oh, OK. That worked. Doesn't always work that easy for me, folks. Let's make some tool paths. Cam, new job. We will change it from stock to be cylindrical. Uh, actually, sorry, from, from extruded sketch. And if you can't see your sketch here, we can actually just pick it there. And we're going to say it's 1.05 or so. Let's see if that works. My fault it ends up you can't have that sketch as a construction line. So if we say, yeah, something like that's fine. Super easy, folks. Turning face, face off the part at first. We're just using a def uh, standard turning tool here. If you guys want, let me know in the comments below. We can go through how we created some of these lathe tools. I learned a lot about inserts and how you program those inserts in the cam, which does matter. Um, so turning tool number seven, select. You can see that looks right for our turret as well. Click OK. You got our tool path right there. Turning profile, same tool, works. Um, click OK just to see what you get. Awesome, except I don't need that much roughing. Why is it doing that? Uh, from stock top should be fine. Uh, point one. There we're getting um, two interesting observations actually. You take a look, it's doing this in cut here. So how do you get rid of that? I don't know a way other than actually to change it from allow grooving. Not super intuitive, but that's going to keep the tool path from going inside like that. The other thing that I first noticed is, wait a minute here, it's like the, it looks like it's going to crash. You know, it's kind of diving in this corner here. Well, it's actually not. A big difference in lathe tooling, when we look at the actual tool, take a look at that little black dot there. It's because the control point that drives the tool pass is the theoretical tip of the tool that's actually got a radius to it. So the tool path here is correct. Click OK. Looks good to me. Let's say we want to run it off the back side a little bit. Go back to Edit. And under Geometry, Confinement. Again, not intuitive. It's the opposite of confinement. Uh, back side offset, 0.1. It's going to run it back 0.1 inches. Awesome. Uh, the drilling, I'm not going to cover. Download the files if you want to see that. Turning Profiling, which threw me. And we're going to switch to a boring bar. So under library, we've got our boring bar right here is tool number two. And again, download the file or we'll show a quick look. Um, not as hard as I thought to actually create this tool and go grab the insert uh, stuff. The tool, by the way, is this little guy. It's got a pretty small uh, boring bar tip in the end. It's a CCMT 21.51. Um, probably great for steel. I like the polished inserts for aluminum and we just found some that I think should fit in this called CCGT. They're on order, um, but this is actually still working okay for, for aluminum for at least for now. Click that tool. Now, it's flipped all right now, but if we change it to machine inside, boom, and let's just, I think if we click okay, it's gonna give us an error. Yeah, so the issue is the heights, and I don't think 
HSM and Fusion do a great job with this because all your heights now need to move to the inside of your part. So what we did was changed this one and this one and this one to origin or absolute. This was 0.08, this is 0.1, and this one was 0.1. What we want to do here is not only profile that outer wall or in, inside wall, but also the back side to square up that face. So now if we click OK, you can see it's going to take, so cool, it's going to take multiple passes, um, but never come, you see the axis, it's never coming into the center line. This is also how you can control the toolpath so that your boring bar doesn't crash because even this boring bar is going to come pretty close to the front wall. So the higher up you set it, um, obviously the, the further distance you've got uh, away from crashing on the opposite side. Now here's what's really cool. If we take a look, right now it's going to be cutting a bunch of air uh, because we haven't told it, hey, I already drilled that out. So if we right click, edit, and say rest machining, so cool. It looks at the, will this work? Yeah, it looks at the drill tip angle, this is a 118 degree drill, and it sees where it's left material, and it comes in there, sort of roughs that out, then does a final pass. Uh, just so cool to me, folks, so cool. So now if we did a stock simulation, hit play, boom, boom, drill out, can rough fast forward here. And here we go. Just like so. How cool is that, folks? Almost forgot, Fusion 360. We'll post this again on the Patreon website. We got everything to work for turning in Fusion 360. I mean, it would be the same post processor as well, folks, except I couldn't get the rest machining on the boring operation to work. So you can see here, it will the code will work, but I'm just, um, profiling out that sidewall. It has the rest machining option from previous op, but it's, it's, just not, uh, it's just not picking it up. So I'll shoot a message to the Fusion 360s team and see maybe it's my mistake or maybe they've got to fix it. But obviously the end goal is to do this all in Fusion 360 because much better value. Now let's go make some chips.